Um, I don't want to bore you guys with history. We're going to run through this real quick here, but we just want you to know that what we're talking about here has been documented and has been successful in humans for a long, long time. So this is a paper published in The Lancet in 1929. Researchers went and measured blood pressure of natives who are living a natural lifestyle, and they compared it to blood pressure results in people living in Europe and America, a much more uh, modern lifestyle. Things were even much different, even in the 1920s. So they had about, just about a thousand people were tested here. And you can see that the average blood pressure of the native Africans was 106 over 67. All right. And then in the Europeans and Americans, you see over 140 over 90. So as you can see, their blood pressure is increasing as they age, but the native Africans had healthy, normal blood pressure throughout their entire life. And so the researchers also went and looked at some hospital records and they looked at 1,000 800 patients who had been admitted over several years. They found zero cases of high blood pressure, zero cases of heart disease, and zero cases of kidney disease. So you ask yourself, what foods did these people eat? It was mainly, it was rice, and it was corn that they were eating. They were also eating lots of beans, they were eating wild greens, and they were eating fruits and vegetables. That was the core of their diet. They didn't eat too much. They were still active. But these foods are protective. Now, researchers also went and studied some people in China. This is in 1937. Several different groups of people living, again, in the mountains. These are native people eating natural food. What did they find amongst this group? They found, again, consistently healthy, low blood pressure, and it barely rose in one of the, the uh, groups of people. And the other two groups, literally, people who were 70 years old had the same blood pressure as 16-year-olds. Their blood pressure did not age. So you hear this a lot, that people think, oh, as you age, it's natural and normal for your blood pressure to rise. That is not true. And they ate corn, they ate rice. Meat was limited to weddings, funerals, and celebrations. They had no milk no butter, no cheese. So another great example of people following a very healthy, low-fat plant-based diet, keeping their blood pressure low throughout life. Now, what's also fun here is Dr. John McDougall. This is one of my favorite studies. We've talked about it previously for diabetes and lowering blood glucose values. But what's fascinating is to learn what can happen in just seven days. And this study is significant because not only um, was there a major improvement in such a short amount of time, but they got to eat as much as they wanted. So Dr. McDougall's diet is a starch-based program, and he allows patients at his seven-day, or it's actually a 10-day live-in retreat, he allows them to eat all that they want. And this includes even things like pancakes, things like pasta, bread, rice, sweet potatoes, yams, corn, all the beans they want, plenty of greens, plenty of fruit. And he does not limit this. He really wants people to eat as much as they want. And even some of these foods are not ideal. There's no question, we've covered that before, but yet the results are still quite extraordinary. Now, what he saw in just seven days, you can see here the systolic blood pressure dropped by eight points, diastolic blood pressure dropped by four points, all right? So you can see that in that column, but here's, but back one more slide, yeah. The most important thing here. No, it's okay. Mike, walk on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> The next slide, this is the most important thing. So in just seven days, they saw that change, but look at the medication reduction, all right? 87% of people who joined this 10-day immersion stopped or reduced their blood pressure medication and still saw that significant change in just seven days. That's showing the power of a low-fat plant-based diet. And another thing, too, that, that I want to add to this is that not only did 87% of them reduce or stop their blood pressure medication, but look at this, 91% of them reduced or stopped their diabetes medications at the same time.
And we keep saying the same thing over and over again, that when you improve your hypertension, your diabetes also improves and your immunity also improves. It's just one in the same because they're the exact same. They're, they're all convenient side effects of a nutrient dense diet. So, in 1950, Dr. Walter Kempner from Duke University came through and he said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think I can replicate this stuff. I can think I can make this even better. So what he did was he invented the rice fruit diet. Okay, the rice fruit diet contains four food groups or four types of foods, I should say, that the modern diabetes world condemns pretty much entirely. The modern diabetes world says, don't eat white rice, don't eat fruits, don't drink fruit juice and certainly don't eat white sugar. And Dr. Kempner said, well, I'm going to make a diet that contains only white rice, only fruits, only fruit juice, and only white sugar. And I'm still going to make people healthier. So Dr. Kempner saw, you know, he, he started performing experiments on human patients and people thought he was nuts. So he started taking people who had a beginning blood pressure of something like 225 over 145. So this is highly hypertensive. And over the course of, in this one, 55 days. So that's like, uh, what is that? Eight weeks. He was able to take people uh, and dramatically reduce both their systolic and their diastolic blood pressure. Eight weeks later, their blood glucose, I'm sorry, their blood pressure was almost normalized, slightly hypertensive at about 135 over 90. That's a dramatic reduction in both systolic and diastolic in a very short period of time. Again, he extended these results to about 120 days. And in other patients, they started with a high blood, uh, blood pressure of 200 over 135. And he got their blood pressure down to exactly normal, 120 over 95. He repeated this over and over and over and over with people, showing that a strict rice fruit diet was able to drop their blood pressure most dramatically at the very beginning of the experiment. And then he would add things in like a quarter of a tomato, heaven forbid, or even allow people to start eating a little bit more meat at that point, and he would still get a reduction. And the reason for this is because their blood pressure was already on a downward decline. And as a result of that, adding in just a small amount of meat didn't seem to make too much of a difference. In uh, the early, you know, like 2010, so we'll call it 2014, uh, the Adventist Health Study uh, out of Loma Linda, California was published, and they basically found something that was very, very similar, which is that when they take people and they stratify them into either a lacto-ovo vegetarian group or a vegan group, what they find is that uh, a number of biomarkers improve related to either uh, high blood glucose, as you see in type 2 diabetes, or high body mass index, or uh, cardiovascular disease. In all situations, eating a lacto-ovo vegetarian diet or a vegan diet improved their health dramatically. If you look at hypertension, they followed 90,000 subjects. 90,000 subjects. This is not a small study by any stretch of the imagination. And they found that eating a lacto-ovo vegetarian diet reduces your, uh, your hypertensive risk by 55%. And if you eat a strict vegan diet, then hypertension gets decreased by 75%. These numbers are absolutely bonkers. Now, there are actually specific foods that you can eat that are known to be blood pressure reducers. So please get out a pen, get out a paper, and write this down. Beets, arugula, spinach, and Swiss chard. The four of these vegetables contain nitrate compounds. Nitrate compounds are a very specific type of compound that when you consume it goes through multiple rounds of bacterial reduction to go from a nitrate into a nitrite. And once it is in the form of nitrite inside of your blood vessels, nitrites serve as the building blocks for nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a very, very potent gas. And when the endothelial cells inside of your blood vessels secrete nitric oxide, blood vessels relax, they dilate, they get larger, and that reduces the tension and the pressure that's already existing inside of them. So simply by eating one to two servings of beets and or arugula and or spinach and or Swiss chard on a daily basis, you can dramatically reduce your blood pressure 
independent of any other lifestyle habit. Am I suggesting that you base your diet based off of just these foods and continue eating meat and cheese and dairy products? The answer is no. But adding these foods into a general plant strong diet is going to have a noticeable, noticeable effect on your blood pressure. And that right there is a simple thing that you can do to keep your, your blood pressure down using just your food. Here's the recommendation. Eat one to two servings, one to two handfuls, if you will, of nitrate rich vegetables per day. And just this by itself will significantly reduce your blood pressure. Okay, It's very similar to what Kempner showed. He was just using different foods to get the same effect. Modern research has found that these foods are even more powerful. Okay, one, one thing I actually want to say here is that uh, people often ask me, they say, oh, well, I can go eat a beet supplement or I can get another supplement that's supposedly nitric oxide rich. Is that good enough? And the answer is no. Always remember this, nitric oxide is a gas. If there is any product that claims that it has nitric oxide inside of the product, they are lying to you. It is not possible to put nitric oxide inside of a product. It is a gas. So what you want to do is give your blood vessels the opportunity to manufacture their own nitric oxide. And when they do that, based off of the foods that you're eating, you get the most effective blood dilation, uh, sorry, I should say uh, blood vessel dilation. And that right there has the most profound impact on lowering your blood pressure. So hopefully that makes sense.